Griffin Update is our student-produced digital magazine show bringing you news, sports, and information from Missouri Western State University and the surrounding region. During each program, we will present an in-depth look at the people, places, and events that make Missouri Western and the Northwest region of Missouri a great place to call home. Thanks for tuning in. You're watching Griffin Update. I'm Mackenzie Bose. And I'm Morgan Doyle. We cover a lot in this show, from pet adoptions to what's happening on campus. When people were saying to prepare for the water, I don't think they quite meant this type of flood. With water records hitting an all-time high, so was the number of abandoned animals. After the shelters took in all the animals they could, they decided to drop adoption prices to help find some animals, some more homes. I love animals, especially little kittens. <laughs> They're pretty darn cute. Would you be willing to adopt? I would, but not until I'm out of college when I can give it more time and attention. You're going to be such a good adoption mother. Until then, reporter Jessica Stallard went to one of the St. Joseph Animal Shelters to tell us more. At the Animal Control and Rescue here in St. Joe, they don't just do adoptions. They also spread awareness of animal education, participate in the Adopt a Highway program, and they coordinate spay and neuter surgeries for low-income families with Spay Day. This animal shelter has been open since 2000 and can hold up to 70 animals. Their mission is to increase animal adoption and minimize the number of euthanized animals. Humane educator for the Animal Control and Rescue, Jennifer Lockwood, has worked here for a year and loves all of the animals. Since I've been here, I think the shelter to me kind of, I think, means second chances for a lot of these dogs and cats. Um, maybe they came in as a stray or maybe they were an owner relinquished for whatever reason. Um, I think it, it means second chances. Majority of the dogs or cats here at the rescue are strays, but they have loving hearts and great personalities. On the first and third Wednesdays of every month, volunteer group Friends of the Animals hosts half-off adoptions. Potential adopter Jasmine Stapleton has been coming to this shelter because she loves all of the animals that come through here. Uh, my friend Mikey, she told me about it and we came here and we literally fell in love with all the animals <laughs> and we just wanted to come back. <laughs> I really fall in love with all of them. Like I'll literally go around and just like look at all of them, pet them, like I just love all of them. <laughs> Even if you don't want to adopt an animal, you can volunteer to interact with the animals and prepare them to be adopted. Reporting for Griffin Media, this is Jessica Stallard. Okay, I might be switching to adopting <laughs> a dog. All of those are so cute. Yeah, I'm definitely more of a dog person. After the flooding, they're back open and working on changes to reboot their building after suffering from this disaster. With changes comes great opportunities. Housing applications are one of those opportunities coming up. Yep, and housing applications can be put off till it's too late if you don't pay attention. I filled mine out though, so I didn't miss the deadline. Good for you. <laughs> since I live off campus though, it's not a big deal for me. Well, since it pertains to me and other students living on campus, I thought I'd get an inside look as to how it works. Check out what I learned. With summer quickly approaching, it's time for students who wish to live on campus next year to apply for housing. Assistant Director of Residential Life Joshua Maples is in charge of the application process and says that there are three steps. On the My Housing Information tab on Goldlink, step number one is to match with your roommates, step number two is to do the actual application, and step number three is to sign up for a room on your assigned date. We do have popular residence halls. Uh, and when new students come in fall of 2019, we are pretty much at max capacity. But this is an opportunity for returning students to skip that line and choose the room that they want. Um, so there is a little bit of a, uh, I need to select my room as soon as possible. And there's a system to deciding who gets put in which room. We have what we call a squatter's rights process. So if you're already living in that room, you have first right to that room. And then it's based on class year, so seniors, juniors, sophomores, and freshmen. Incoming seniors, juniors, and sophomores could all begin applying this past week, while incoming freshmen can apply March 28th, and open session sign-up will begin on March 30th. 
housing applications, there are deadlines, and if you don't meet that deadline, you really run the risk of not getting a placement. The earlier you put in, kind of the earlier you sec secure a place. And there's a variety of places on campus to choose from. Bashirs, Judah, and Griffin Halls all offer an individual living space, while Griffin also has a full kitchen. Leverton and Vislacos have a common living area and privacy walls separating suite mates, while Scanlon is your typical double occupancy dorm. If you are looking for a community that has got a lot of activity, um, I think Scanlon and Leverton and Vislacos are probably your best bet. Griff is great too, um, as are the suites, but it tends to be upperclassmen in the suites in Griffin, and so you do have a little bit more independence. For more information on the different residence halls or how to apply, visit missouriwestern.edu slash reslife. For Griffin Media, I'm Morgan Doyle. I've been where you fear to be. I've seen what you fear to see. I've done what you fear to do. All of these things I've done for you. I am the person you lean upon, the one you cast your scorn upon. And the one you bring your troubles to. All these people, I've been for you. All these people, I've been for you. All these people, I've been for you. All of these people, I've been for you. You know, it's really nice that they give students the opportunity to get the same room they're in again. Yeah, I just really like how the whole process works. You know what else is the process? Organizing a club on campus, the meetings, you know, there's a lot of work that goes into it. Mm -hmm. I'm in a couple clubs here on campus, but I don't schedule the meetings. Well, one of the clubs on campus is the communications club. Reporter Christian Sarna attended their meeting to tell us more. The Communication Club is a student organization that was founded last year. Their faculty advisor is Dr. Jordan Atkinson, an assistant professor at Missouri Western. I sat down with him to discuss their plans for the upcoming semester. Yeah, so the Communication Club was formed last year and it is a club for students who are any major on campus to come together. We do some uh, service events, we do some professional development events, and we also do some social events and really try to get students excited about communication and what we have to offer here in the department. And then of course we'll have... Chandra Traxler is a founding member of the Communication Club. She says the club is a great opportunity to make friends while giving back to the community. Town Club is a very interesting um, type of club because you have all these service events and we've been able to help a lot of people through our clothing drives and our food drives, but we also have fun events that we've done in the past. It's been this really interesting um, experience where you get to have experience in your field with friends that you have and help the community. I feel like everybody should come to Communication Club because it is a great way to help people on the campus as well as get a good resume. Communication Club will be meeting almost every other Thursday at 4 p.m. in Murphy 207. For more information, contact Dr. Jordan Atkinson. Reporting for Griffin Media, I'm Christian Sarna. Well, I might try to attend their next meeting. That'd be good. <laughs> well, Bailey Sportsport and the Griffin Newscast is coming up next. On my honor, I will never betray my badge. My integrity, my character, or the public trust. I will always have the courage to hold myself and others accountable for my acts. I will always uphold the Constitution, my community, and the agency I serve. My community and the agency I serve. My community and the agency I serve. My community and the agency I serve. Coming up, Missouri Western announces its next president, SGA has its biggest election turnout in years, and United Way organizes a community event to combat flooding. I'm Cole Wildhagen, and the Griffin Newscast starts now. Missouri Western announced that Matthew Wilson will be taking over Robert Vardabedian's position as president starting in July. Wilson held a press conference last Monday to introduce himself to the community. Reporter Chloe Ryan has the story. I'm convinced that here at Missouri Western, everything is possible. Especially if we redouble our commitment to students, 
student success, applied learning, degree completion, service, workforce readiness, and the like. Those are just some of the goals that incoming president Matthew Wilson has for Missouri Western. The announcement that Wilson will be taking the position happened during spring break, and a press conference introducing himself to Missouri Western happened the Monday school resumed. Student Governor Paul Granberry is looking forward to Wilson becoming president. Uh, so I thought Matthew's speech was great. Uh, I think he was a perfect fit for the university as a whole, uh, just because of his extensive background uh, in being involved with universities. Uh, I believe the student body will embrace him just because he's very proactive. Uh, Dr. Bartabedian did a great job at laying out a solid foundation for us to move forward, and I believe that Matthew has the capabilities of pushing Missouri Western to the next level. This is Chloe Ryan reporting for the Griffin Newscast. Concerned members of the community came together last week to fill sandbags to counter the rise of the Missouri River. Reporter Brendan Carney will catch you up to speed. The Missouri River reached record levels last week as flooding affected St. Joseph, Elwood, and the surrounding areas. The United Way of St. Joseph joined together with members of the community to fill sandbags and to combat the rising river. And there, filling sandbags, was incoming President Matthew Wilson to both help and get to know the community. So, as the incoming president of Missouri Western, I think it's really important to engage in community when I'm here and even before I'm here. There's nothing more that a university president can do than to serve the students and to serve the community. And it's such a great day to see all of these folks from St. Joe's who are out helping with emergency preparedness and also response. Today was just that fabulous. We were out here for about an hour and a half, two hours, interacting with the community, seeing how everybody comes together to help out their neighbors. And we're truly, truly excited to be part of this wonderful community and be able to serve Missouri Western and the city of St. Joseph. This is Brendan Carney reporting for Griffin Newscast. This SGA election definitely broke the mold. After three years of uncontested SGA elections, Ngoma Fataki and Nathan Scott won the vote for president and vice president. This election was also unique because it had one of the highest voter turnouts of any SGA election, with 548 students voting. Last election, only 42 students actually voted. That's your news in five minutes. I'm Cole Wildhagen, and thanks for watching. At Missouri Western, it's on us. It's on us, all of us, to take responsibility and stop sexual assault. To create a campus environment where everyone is safe and feels safe. To realize that ending sexual assault is not an individual endeavor, but a collective effort. To understand that it affects not only students, but faculty and staff members alike. At Missouri Western, we take action. It's on us to look out for each other and not look the other way. We step up and say something. We support survivors. We are going to be a part of the solution and not the problem. It's on us to intervene and take responsibility. So take action because we can and will make a difference. At Missouri Western, it's on us to, to put, put an, an end, end to sexual, sexual assault. assault. Begin by taking the pledge at itsonus.org. Welcome to the Griffin Update Sports Report, your place to catch up on all Griffin sports. I'm your host, Bailey Ketchum. First in sports, softball had a long weekend with lots of games at the Hy-Vee Classic Tournament. Reporter Brett Howery was there to cover it. Although Griffin softball just debuted the field for practice on Tuesday, it was on Saturday where they actually played their first game, facing number 22 Winona State and beating them 1-0. All they needed was the first inning to get that run across as Gabby Carter was able to hit a single about two outs and she was driven home pretty quickly. Oh, it felt great, you know, going out and scoring, being the first to score is really like a pretty big momentum builder and it's really great to do it against such a great team like Winona. I most definitely did not think that that was going to be the only run of the game and the fact that there was two outs and Gabby was on first base, I was just, you know, in that mindset, just get a base hit, move the runner, you know, two out rally kind of thing. I mean, but it worked out that she was able to score from first and yeah, it ended up being the only run, so. It was the performance of senior pitcher Lexi Kennard that really shined in this game though, going seven innings, striking out five on number 22, Winona. Honestly, it felt great. And I think that it was a great team win. Um, personally, it, 
actually would not have been possible without any of the defensive plays that were made behind me. So they played incredible, and I think it was just it was just phenomenal for our team to be able to do something like that. This upset also had something else going for it, as Coach Jen Bagley Trotter got her 615th MIAA record win. It was also the game that made Coach Bagley the most winning as coach in the MIAA. It was just perfect that it was against Winona. For Griffin Media, this is Brett Howery. Thank you for watching. Softball plays home again this weekend against Lindenwood on Friday and Lincoln University Saturday. In other sports news, baseball played a three-game series at Lindenwood and dropped two of the games to the Lions. Pitcher Anthony Castaneda pitched another complete game in their win on Saturday. For more updates on the weekend, women's tennis lost Friday and Sunday against Emporia State and Washburn. Their next matches are set for this weekend down in Oklahoma against UCO and Northeastern. That's all we have for you today in sports. For more information on Griffin Athletics, check out gogriffins.com. Well, that brings us to the end of our show. You can watch our show on MWSU TV Channel 12. You can also catch us on the Griffin Update Vimeo and YouTube channels and the Missouri Western Student Media homepage. And make sure to check out the next edition of the Griffin News. For all of us here at Griffin Update, thank you for watching.